we have a very clear choice coming up in the general election in regards to how this city develops and grows. It is clear that the people of Madison are ready for change. We cannot go backwards. We have to look forward. We have to look to a growing community. We're going to keep talking about the solutions that we all know are possible. These challenges are not unique and they are not unsolvable. Together we can do this. It's going to be Satya versus Soglin. That's right. The battle for Madison. Yeah, I like that. Our conscience and our soul. <laughs> Are we going forwards or backwards, sideways or forwards, and always twirling, twirling, twirling towards tomorrow? Wow. All right. The vote totals for Madison mayor for these two are close. Paul Soglin received 29% of the vote. Satya received 28% of the vote. And about 10,000-some votes, right? Paul Sogan got 10,771 votes. Satya got 10,448 votes, which is yeah. a difference of just over 200 votes. Mo Cheeks got 8,801 vote for 23%. Raj got almost 7,000 votes for 18% of the electorate. And then Nick Hart, the comedian, got uh, 386 votes the, he, you know, for around 1%. So I guess the big question is, you can look at those results and you can say, well, Soglin won, he's the incumbent, he's in the driver's seat. Or you can say, Soglin barely won, several people running against him got a lot of votes, and if that pattern continues, he could be in trouble. People are talking about, like, like this is a squeaker for Paul Soglin, mm-hmm. he barely got, you know, he barely made it, you know, he didn't barely make it through the primary. He's through the primary. He with, won. With, with, he won. Yeah. And he also you know, he wasn't within a thousand votes of be, of losing, of not being, not placing in this primary too. If he'd come in second, he would have made yeah. it through the primary. It actually occurred to me, so I voted two hours after the polls had opened and there were less than 60 voters at that point, which means that there was about one voter every two minutes coming in. Well, the nice thing though, is that even though nobody voted in this race, we know they're all going to listen to a podcast about <laughs> this, the primary election, which is why we're talking about it today on Center Stage with Milford and Hands, the Wisconsin State Journal's political podcast from the Sensible Center of Wisconsin Politics. I'm Scott Milford, the editorial page editor for the Wisconsin State Journal. And I'm Phil Hands. I'm the editorial cartoonist for the Wisconsin State Journal. And we are half of the Wisconsin State Journal editorial board. The better looking half. Okay, so Phil, you know what they say about a broken clock. It's uh, right twice a day? Exactly. What do they say about broken editorial page editors? I'm right, I don't know, twice every few elections? I don't know. (laughs) But I did nail it last night with my tweet, I have to say. Just as the polls closed, I predicted that it would be Soglin and Satya. And why did you say that? Uh, I said it because I thought Soglin is just, too big of a name to get uh, Sue Balmond. She was the previous mayor who lost miserably in a primary, even though she was an incumbent. And Satya, I thought she was better connected across the community. And I think that she distinguished herself more from Soglin. Raj Shukla and Mo Cheeks, they didn't go after Soglin as much, and they didn't define how they're different. I mean, Satya... A, she's a woman. Yeah. There's a contrast there, not just in age, but in sex. She would be the first openly gay mayor. And she also took him on, like on the Judge Doyle Square. She was the farthest to the left in this race. Which also distinguishes her from Soglin, who even though he's very far left, he was, I guess, closest to the middle of any of them. Yeah. So she was the sharpest contrast and she had a lot of energy based on her victory speech with a lot of hooting and hollering. You all know that I was pretty dramatically outspent in this primary. (laughs) But the fact that I'm standing here tonight is testament to the, that people are more important than dollars. that is going to get us through April 2nd. Yeah. Woo! Thank you so much. 
I'm so looking forward to working with you for the next couple of months and for the next four years. I think she really fired up the progressive part of Madison that's been unhappy with Paul Soglin's radically conservative uh, running of City Hall for the last eight years. <laughs> Yeah, he's not really conservative in any way, but he's for Madison, he is. And I also think Mo Cheeks and Rod Shukla probably ended up canceling each other out to a certain extent. I think there was a block of people that wanted somebody who wasn't Soglin, but somebody that wasn't as progressive as, as Satya. Uh-huh. And those people voted for, for one of those two candidates. And neither one of those candidates broke into the top two primary. But the two of them combined got way more than the other two candidates. They were both sort of the optimistic, fresh face running. So they did kind of have that overlap. So four years ago, I looked at what happened with Scott Resnick. And granted, Paul Soglin got 53% of the vote in the primary last time around, Uh which is, you know, that's more than half the votes. It makes you feel pretty good. But Resnick got 23% of the votes, which is just five points less than, than Satya. When the, when the general election came around, he went from 23% to 27%. Okay. So there weren't a whole lot of people out there who said, you know, I didn't vote for Soglin in the, in the primary, and I'm going to support Scott Resnick now in the general election. The way Soglin wins is we go back to your comments several podcasts ago about the silent majority in Madison. Not in the Richard Nixon sense, where it was sort of a conservative silent majority. In Madison, your theory was that the silent majority is generally liberal and generally okay with Soglin as mayor, right? As one of my curling buddies said, I still haven't figured out a reason not to vote for Paul Soglin. We are one of the few cities in the United States that have not only prospered economically, but we have seen it cross all racial and ethnic lines. Now, that doesn't mean we're satisfied. That does not mean we're content with our situation here in Madison, Wisconsin. But it does mean we are on the right track. Satya Rhodes-Conway, with her second place victory in the primary, has been talking up that she would be the first openly LGBTQ. Do I have all the letters in there? Well, there's also an A if you want to add that in there, too, but, you know. Essentially the first gay mayor. And consider this. We have a state Supreme Court race with a candidate who is the conservative-backed candidate in the statewide Supreme Court race, and he has been kind of outed as anti-gay. Homophobic, maybe? Yeah, and uh, he was blogging that if the courts strike down anti-sodomy laws, that could open up the door legally to... Uh, Bestiality, I believe. A, yeah, and he's and it seems like he's not just saying, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, that was a long time ago. He's just saying, well, I won't let my personal views affect what I do on the bench. But my point is, there may be a lot of people who want to vote against that guy yep. in a place like Madison because they're not going to put up with these backward views of gay and lesbian citizens. Yeah. So Satya could potentially get a surge of maybe some voters that she wouldn't otherwise have coming in because they don't they just don't like this Supreme Court candidate. They're going to vote against them and oh, as long as I'm doing that, Madison could have its first openly gay uh, mayor. And maybe you get in a lot of young people, too. You know, I don't so- think Soglin really appeals to the young folk. No, he's, he's the baby boomer candidate. And generally, the baby boomers will vote in an election like this a lot more than young people, which is to his advantage. But if there is that scenario where people are riled about Trump, young people are, and they're riled about the Supreme Court candidate, maybe they come out and, and give uh, Saatchi just what she needs to get over the finish line. And Saatchi's going to court those votes. She's going to court the people. She's going to be the change agent. She's going to, you know, make Madison more inclusive, more progressive um, in a way that Paul Soglin, it's not like he's not inclusive or progressive, but she's going to be more so. Continue than to talk about the issues. We're going to continue to understand the challenges that Madison faces our affordable housing crisis, our transportation problems, the deep and shameful racial disparities that this city experiences, and the climate change that is coming for us. We're gonna keep talking about those and we're gonna keep talking about the solutions that we all know are possible 
These challenges are not unique and they are not unsolvable. Together we can do this. Development and growth is something that sogan has been proud of. He thinks he's contributed to making Madison a very prosperous city. He's often uh, kind of got into some Twitter uh, battles with uh, statewide or congressional Republicans from Wisconsin. You know, he says Madison has basically been holding up the economy of Wisconsin, that we're doing so well. Yeah. He's going to tout that. But then Satya Rhodes-Conway can come in and say, well, it's not working for a whole bunch of people if you're not making much money or you're black. And they completely disagree on Judge Doyle Square, it seems. She's calling it sort of like a Trumpian... Uh, Boondoggle, you know, it's a scam yeah. going on in the city. And Soglin sees it at, as this key way to keep downtown refreshed and vibrant and buzzing. There definitely are a lot of contrasts between these two candidates. I thought it was interesting that Soglin, in his acceptance speech, brought up tiny houses. And they, tiny houses aren't a solution to our housing crisis. And that's totally a dig at Satya and her support for mm-hmm. this t- tiny house movement to get homeless people into small houses. It's a choice between tiny homes, which do not provide housing for families, and the very aggressive policies that we have launched in regards to taking the lid off of the constraints so that we don't chew up valuable farmland with urban sprawl, unwise environmental policies, but work and concentrate on using our infrastructure wisely, building more housing, more family housing for this community, and figuring out a way for paying for all the good works we want to continue with in Madison as we close the gap in, in diversity. One of the things that makes housing in Madison so unaffordable is all the onerous city regulations mm-hmm. that makes it more expensive to develop housing. Yeah. And, and so that's going to be his solution to some of the housing crisis stuff where I think Saatchi is going to go the other direction and have more regulations to hold developers accountable and make development more expensive in the end. They're both smart and know a lot about cities, so I think the debates will be interesting. I think these debates, too, with just the two of them, they're going to be a little sharper than, I think so. I think than when you got six people on a stage and everybody gets to kind of say one little thing and move on to five more people. People worked really hard to not be mean to other candidates. Yeah. Nobody wanted to put down Toriana Petaway or mm-hmm. her Mo Cheeks and be accused of not respecting a candidate of color. That's not going to be the case in this general election. And the two nicest candidates lost in Mo Cheeks and Rod Shook. Yeah, it's, that's true, too. Uh, so there's going to be some more elbows. Satya's base was sort of centered in the central Madison yep. and the east side. Southland had a lot of power, had a lot of strength on the west side, but there was also a lot of wards where, where Mo and Raj won districts on the, on the near west side, especially where they're both from. So where do those voters go? I don't know. I think, I think the assumption is that they all go to Satya Rhodes Conway. <laughs> and I know that Raj Shukla has already endorsed Satya Rhodes Conway. Oh, uh, okay. But I know a lot of voters, myself included, <laughs> who are probably leaning towards, who, who voted for one of those two in the primary uh-huh. and are probably leaning towards Soglin. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people don't know as much about Satya Rhodes Conway as they do of Soglin. I mean, that's true of us as well. Yes. Pretty much everybody who votes in Madison, unless you just came here and got hired by Epic last week, you, you kind of know Paul Soglin. People, I mean, when, um, I, when, I, when I lived in Detroit... Yeah. I had heard of Paul Soglin. Yeah. But uh, Satya Rhodes Conway, she was on the city council, but one of 20 people in the city council and hasn't been in on the city council in years. So there isn't that name recognition. She has deep connections to Madison's progressive political mm-hmm. infrastructure in a way that neither Mo or Raj really had connections. Well, Soglin did do, I think he did pretty well over on the east side, too. On the far east side, yeah. yeah. He just he's he doesn't win downtown. He doesn't win. Yeah. He doesn't win where the super lefties really live. Yeah, 
Raj and Mo raised the most money in this campaign, which implies that it's easier to raise money in Madison than it is to get connected to the inner circles of political power structures. I will say that you could tell who was going to win the election based on how many letters to the editor they were in the paper endorsing them. <laughs> so Salkin by far had the most letters to the editor endorsing him. Yeah. Satya had a handful. Mo had one. We get received one letter endorsing <laughs> Mo, Mo Cheeks, and we ran it. And uh, Raj Shukla did not have a single person send a letter to the editor supporting him. And I think it shows that, you know, yeah. the people who voted in this election, they all read the state journal for the most part. Mm-hmm. And a reading the editorial page. The other thing it shows is old school politics still has a lot of muscle. I mean, um, Mo Cheeks, I think by far, had the most sophisticated social media campaign going on. We, yeah. We're getting videos of him, and he's showing up all over, whether I'm on Twitter or Facebook or some other social media or online. And I'm getting lots of interesting emails from him. And Hi, Phil. Yeah, he was just really working that well. And I think to some degree, Raj and uh, Satya were certainly ahead of Soglin on that curve. I mean, Soglin's old school politician. And so uh, even though Madison's young, we got all these epic employees downtown. We got the university. The old guy and name recognition and running a campaign like he's always run it. Actually, one. Yeah. Not the not the whippersnappers with their devices. <laughs> How dismissive of younger gener- younger people. Well, Scott. they're going to take over eventually here. But I mean, Satya Rhodes Conway. It's not like I mean, she's dang near as old as I am, and I'm fifty. What is she? Forty five or something? Mid forties. So it's not like she's super young either. She's no she's, Phil Hands. She. That's right. She's a uh, seasoned. But there's other races. We are now about to send out an email, Phil, to the. Two finalists for the mayoral race to have them come in and meet with our editorial board to see who we're going to endorse. We are going to send out emails to uh, 22 candidates for 11 seats. Good for democracy, bad for our calendar. (laughs) On the Madison City Council. And then there are six candidates running for Madison School Board. We're going to invite all of them in, talk to them, try to get to know them a little bit. Uh, before we issue our editorial board endorsements in all of those races. And we probably will also endorse and invite in the candidates in that Supreme Court race. Yeah. What do you think Trump would have for nicknames for for Satya and Sogman? <laughs> oh, boy. Hippie Paul? Hippie Paul Sogman. <laughs> Hippie Paul. I think I'd, I would throw the gr- grumpy stash, but maybe that's too clever for Trump. That's our nickname for him. Soggy Soglin. Or uh, Castro Paul or... Castro Paul, I like that, yeah. Cuba Paul, yeah. And then Satya, let's see, what would he hit her with? Sanctimonious Satya. <laughs> <laughs> That's too big of a word That's for Trump. That's too big a word for, for Trump. No. Madison Maiden? I don't know. That's, too, that's not put down He'd enough. probably say something really offensive that we wouldn't yeah, agree with at all. we couldn't say it over the podcast. Huh. Satya. He'd probably make fun of that. Satya. Satya. <laughs> now, he doesn't know other languages. Satnyet. <laughs> there you go. Satnyet. <laughs> his, yeah. his buddy Vlad taught him that. Vlad would... Oh, would, Bl- Vlad Sat-nyet. would just... Vlad would be cracking out loud, falling over laughing at that. It's Satnyet versus Castro Paul. <laughs> Trump, you make very funny name for these Madison leftists. I don't do a good Russian accent. That was not bad for oh. you. I will crush you. That's the only one I can do is from Rocky <laughs> 3, or was that 5? I can't... Uh, uh, Rocky 2? I'm not sure I saw those I Rocky. will crush you. You haven't seen it? I'm not sure I Good have. Lord, I've seen all the Rocky movies, so I've seen a movie you haven't seen. Probably. This is amazing. This is amazing. You're not a true American, Phil. If you haven't seen Rocky Balboa beat the, I know I the saw, giant I've Russian. Seen, I saw the one where he's like, uh, what is he? Was, uh, um, Angie, you know, when he yells Angie or something like that. Oh, my God. You're not even getting your name right. Adrian! That's yeah. right.
All of the music on our podcast is by Tube Tester. 